A new leak has revealed a very anticipated title coming to PC. Valve Stealth dropped a new Steam Deck feature with the latest 3.2 update and the iFixit store has gone live. Let's get into it. The first story I have for you today is that Sony and PC are becoming besties. In the past, I've reported on Sony's growing relationship with PC gaming, and it seems that they're going to take things to the next level. Back on Wednesday, Sony published an investor briefing detailing that by 2025, they expect one third of their releases to be on the PC. This increased investment in the PC space is due in large part to Sony's success with key ports so far. That includes Death Stranding, Horizon Zero Dawn, Days Gone, and God of War. These have all done very well for Sony, selling over 4 million copies and generating over $100 million in revenue. As a result, Sony's revenue from PC sales have been growing quickly year over year with 35 million in 2020, 80 million in 2021, and an expected 300 million in the fiscal year 2022, which only got started a couple months ago. Clearly, they have very big plans for the coming 10 months, and while we know that includes Uncharted, they've been pretty quiet about what else is coming to PC this year. Given that very large number, we can expect that this includes some of the games as a service games that they have been working on, but I'm interested in the ports of existing and upcoming PlayStation exclusives. And that brings us to the latest news. An entry on Steam DB has revealed one of the ports that we can expect to see coming to PC soon. The game has a title of Oregon, but that clearly is just a code name, and if you dig deeper, you'll see a series of localizations that give away the title in question. Helios, Atropo, and Tower of Sisyphus all come from the awesome Returnal. This action roguelite released exclusively on PS5 back in April 2021, and while I did finish this game on PS5, I would welcome a port so that I can play this game portably on my Steam Deck. Not to mention the fact that I still haven't played the large updates that include multiplayer and the Tower of Sisyphus, an endless mode with additional story bits. For what it's worth, this isn't the first time that a Sony PC port was revealed to us by way of SteamDB. We've yet to see an announcement for Sackboy, but a SteamDB entry confirmed that it too was on the way. Sackboy and Returnal were both in the big NVIDIA leak, along with Uncharted, God of War, and Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now that those titles are either released, announced, or leaked via SteamDB, that gives more credence to the other Sony games on the list like Ghost of Tsushima, Gran Turismo 7, Demon Souls, and Horizon Forbidden West. Sadly, there was no Bloodborne or Spider-Man on the NVIDIA list, but also I suppose that's how we know that it is the real deal. In any case, this is all good news for me because I haven't powered up my PS5 in months. I love Sony games, but I'd rather just play them on PC and especially on my Steam Deck. Here's hoping Returnal multiplayer will have crossplay with the PS5 player base. Next up is the new SteamOS update. This new update brings SteamOS 3.2 to the stable channel. By the way, if you don't know what I mean when I say stable channel or beta channel, these are two different options that you can choose in your Steam Deck settings. By default, you should have the stable channel selected, and that means that you get new features when Valve thinks that these features are stable enough to bring to everyone. For people who want to try features earlier and be on the bleeding edge, there's the beta channel. Most of the time I report on new features, they're going to be from the beta channel since those are the updates that I get. That said, there is one brand new feature to this update and that's Remote Play Together. This feature allows you to play online multiplayer with games that don't have online play built in. And because of the way this works, they don't have to own the game that they play with you. So you can start up any game that has local multiplayer like Footsies, Samurai Gun, Jitsu Squad, or Assault Android Cactus. Then you just open the quick access menu and you'll see a new icon at the top. From here you can create a session and you'll see a fancy menu that allows you to invite a friend or even just copy a URL that you can send to someone. You can also reorder remote controllers right from this menu which is very handy. And my first remote session with a friend didn't go very well but that seemed to be a fluke because I later played Assault Android Cactus with fellow content creator Star Logical and then Gardener Bryant and both of these sessions were fantastic. By the way, Assault Android Cactus is awesome and a great way to test remote play together so buy it the next time you see it on sale. 
This update also brings the refresh rate switching feature as well as the updated fan curve to everyone using the Steam Deck. Notably, you can now switch back to the old fan curve by going to system settings. So if you think the new fan curve is too quiet or keeping your CPU too warm, then you can go ahead and disable the setting here. That said, this latest fan curve seems to be working wonders for people. I had one commenter tell me that they were going to buy one of the fans from the iFixit Steam Deck store, but the fan curve update changed their mind entirely. They no longer need one. Also, I haven't seen anyone talk about this, but there are now more internal resolutions to pick from. What this means is that you can now go into a game and select from some resolutions that are smaller than 1200 by 800. This is especially helpful for games that don't support FSR in game. That way you can lower the in-game resolution and apply the system level FSR instead. Pretty awesome. Overall, this is a solid update for the deck gang and even included some unexpected features like remote play together. Earlier this week, I covered the iFixit leak, but just a couple hours later, the iFixit Steam Deck store officially launched. They're selling screens, power supplies, fans, speakers, analog sticks, and a lot more. But virtually everything in the store sold out immediately. The only items still in stock are bumpers, triggers, and button membranes. Some of you all did get a hold of these parts. Of course, I saw one poster on Reddit who goes by Ameth990, and they replaced their fan with the better one. You can hear the difference for yourself here. In any case, just as important as the parts are the new and excellent iFixit guides. These guides have really detailed instructions with pictures for each step, and there's like 25 of them. So whether you want to replace the SSD, the battery, the fan, a touchpad, the speakers, or basically anything, iFixit has you covered. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do one of these replacements using the iFixit guide step by step. For today's community spotlight, I'd like to shout out Reddit user C Minerals for creating an awesome looking accessory attachment system for the Steam Deck. This is somewhat reminiscent of the Steam Clip system I demonstrated in my Steam Deck mods video. C Minerals posted their own video to the Steam Deck subreddit, and in it you can see that they demonstrate a kickstand, a wall mount, and a generic puck that you can use to attach things like docks, SSDs, and I assume smaller power banks. This is really neat, and once again, I'm happy to see the Steam Deck community building their own creations to enjoy with the Steam Deck. And finally, I have a pair of shmups to share with you. Both of these 2D shoot 'em ups are affordable and play well on deck. First up is Drainus, which is on sale for another day after this video goes live. This game is by Team Ladybug, who I'm a huge fan of. They've been making amazing sleeper Metroidvania titles like Record of Lodos War and To Who Luna Nights, but this is the first shmup I've seen from this studio. They retain the clean looking pixel art and action oriented design of previous titles, but bring that to a horizontal shooter in Drainus. There are a ton of unlockable weapons you can equip to your ship, and the main gimmick of the game is the ability to absorb projectiles to fire a larger attack at your foe. These features make for a fresh look at the genre from a very capable studio. I found no issues playing this on the Steam Deck, and I think it's well worth a look. The second horizontal shooter I have for you is called Space Dragons. This game is still in early access, but it's only four bucks. I bought it on a whim and I ended up enjoying it so much that I bought a copy for all the people on my Patreon after I hit 15k subs. Anyway, this is a lot more of a traditional shoot 'em up and it feels like it's pulled straight out of the Neo Geo era. And given the low cost of entry, I'd really recommend taking a look. That's going to do it for today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button since that helps this video spread to more people. And also subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the Steam Deck, PC gaming, and more. Deck Gang out. Goodbye.